Hi, in this video, we are going to monitor the growth and impact of our forest. During the first two to three years of the growth of our forest, we would like to measure the impact that it is creating on the environment and the surrounding area. Also, we want to monitor whether the forest is growing to its best or there is some scope of improvement. So usually we have three key performance indicators or KPIs. The first one is growth of the trees. What we usually do is we measure the height of some of the trees of our forest. We try to take at least two samples of each species if it is a small forest. If it is a large forest we might take 5% or 3% of the entire planted species and number of trees and monitor their growth every month. We measure their growth every month and find out the average height of our forest. Second KPI is we measure the girth of our trees. So for the height we have target growth rate of on an average 1 meter per year. This is applicable to India only because trees grow here at a rate which can be compared to the average growth rate of 1 meter per year. In some colder regions in India also this growth rate might be too high. So in the tropical region where we are or in most of the India flat land Indian subcontinent, 1 meter per year average growth rate is good enough. For the girth we don't have a target growth rate. However, monitoring the girth will help you understand the growth pattern of the species that you have planted. Usually in the first two to three years, the trees will grow vertically high because that's where the sunlight is. Later on, once they have reached the tall stages, once they have started to develop their canopy, they can photosynthesize a lot more and they will start to develop their girth as well. The third KPI is the survival rate of our forest. In any successful project, after three years of plantation, ideally the survival rate should be 90% plus. If it is less than 90%, we can analyze what are the species that are not able to survive in the project. So that later on when we are doing another afforestation project, we are excluding those species or reducing the quantity of those species which are not able to survive. This is also a good indicator of whether we have selected the species right or not. So three KPIs, growth, girth and survival. To measure the impact of our forest, we have to develop an eye to observe the small qualitative stuff that we are going to see in a grown forest. Right now we are in a forest which is more than one year old and you can see compared to outside the sunlight here both on the ground and at the eye level is far less than what we had experienced outside. Also the temperature inside this forest is a lot lesser than compared to the place outside. What we usually do is we keep a thermometer at the forest floor at the ground level which measures the surface temperature of the forest and we compare it with the surface temperature just outside the forest on the barren patch of land. The kind of land that it used to be before we planted the forest. Another easier way to identify or monitor the impact of the forest is to check the moisture in the soil. You would have learnt in the maintenance session that before watering we usually check out the moisture level in the soil by touching it and also checking the moisture level will give you an indication of the health of the forest. So if you take a handful of this soil, put it under a microscope, you will see a lot of small ants, termites, microorganisms, residue of many of such microorganisms small roots like like these and these are the indicators of a healthy forest if you go to a natural forest also you are going to find such type of soil if you smell this soil 
you will feel that it is a lot healthier and fertile compared to the soil which is exposed to sunlight. This soil is always covered with natural mulching. So you can imagine the microbes under this soil are always in the environment which is protected from sunlight. They have a lot of feed in form of the biomass that is falling on it and they have a lot of root networks to support their growth. Organisms like fungi grows on the root zones of the plants, the trees of these forests. Let me show you an example, an indicator of a healthy fungal network under the root zone of these forests. So small mushrooms like these are an indicator of a healthy fungal network under the topsoil of this forest. So when we look at mushrooms like these, we can easily imagine that throughout the root zone of this forest, there would be a lot of fungus. And this fungus helps the forest trees to communicate with each other, also exchange the nutrition. Another example is the small amount of biodiversity of small insects or animals living in the soil. So this could be done by ants or termites of this forest. All this contributes to the biodiversity of the forest. So biodiversity is a great indicator of the impact of the forest. So many a times people ask us what do we do if there is a termite attack like this in their forest. And our answer is usually it's nothing to worry because termites they can only consume dead wood. They will never consume fresh wood or wood that is alive. When the forest is in its infancy, when it's still growing, there is no dead wood available. So termites in only that stage will be killing some of the trees and eating the dead wood. Otherwise, such termite attack will not be happening on the live trees. So an easy way to counter it is you can use some of the native dead wood and throw it in your forest. Usually our support sticks are the consumption material for all the termites found in the forest. But termite is also a great indicator of healthy biodiversity of the forest. So it's essential for us to observe these types of small indicators that tells us that this forest is making a great impact on the ecosystem of the region because flora the vegetation cannot move it is facilitated by us that we brought all this flora in this place in a similar fashion in which they would have grown in nature fauna the animals the birds small uh, insects all of them can move and they use this forest as their natural habitat so in the process of monitoring the impact of the growth of our forest. We are also going to monitor the coming back of some of the keystone species of fauna found in that geography. Once we see these keystone species, we can easily establish the connection that we have brought back a forest that would have been found at that particular place a few hundred years ago before human intervention because it is bringing back the same fauna that is now nowhere to be seen in this area. But because of the forest coming back, the birds, the animals, they are also finding their natural habitat in this forest. And that's the reason why they have come back. Here in this one and a half year old forest, we can see the big nest of one of such species of birds. As the forest grows, the trees gain more and more strength and once they become strong enough that even bigger birds can land on them, slowly you will see that the amount of biodiversity and the size of the animals that this forest is attracting is increasing. So these are the keystone species which are the bigger stamp of approval of the success of any project like this. However, we also have to monitor our forest for some of those species which should not be there in a natural forest of that particular place. 
In some of the cases we have seen if by mistake we have planted a non-native species or a species which is not found in that locality even if it is a native species. It will attract a kind of parasite, a, it could be a bug, it could be a bird that can be detrimental to the growth or the health of the forest. In Korea, we have seen an example where on the on one of the island of uh, Han River in the city of Seoul, they have planted some non-native Chinese species in Korea. And because of those species, a certain bug is being attracted towards these non-native trees. But that bug has the ability to attack other native trees found in Korea as well. So by bringing a non-native species, we have attracted the wrong kind of parasite which is detrimental to the health of entire ecosystem, entire vegetation of that particular geography. So it is also essential for us to monitor the biodiversity which ideally should not be found in that particular place. So this is how we can monitor the growth and impact of any forest. Hope you have found this video informational and will be able to make use of it. Wish you all the best in monitoring your forest. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you so much for staying with us throughout the series. Hope you have learned how to make your own forest. Hope these videos will help you to maintain it, monitor it, and also show the impact of your forest. If you have any questions, please let us know. Please share about the first forest that you would have made after watching these videos. And I hope that we'll be able to improve our methodology with your feedback. Thank you so much for backing this project on Kickstarter. Without your support, we would not have been able to make these video tutorials. Thank you once again. Hope to see you soon.